Well, this is gonna be pretty freaking nice. This is so worth it. So good to be here. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen anybody ride that fast here. I don't know, it's a weird feeling, almost dying. Projekt i vinter om å ha litt mer klimavennlig skikjøring. Ta godt imot, Nikolai Kirmer. Reduserte utslippene mine fra 40 tonn CO2 i året til 12 tonn CO2 i året. Men likevel vil vi lage bedre skifilm. Og det er det vi skal stemme om her i kveld, om skikjøringen din har blitt bedre enn fra året før. Riktig. Ok, ja, men da snurrer vi den filmen. So I've been three months on the road now, and it definitely feels good to be heading back home. The mountains are just getting cooler the further north I go, higher, steeper, and there's definitely a few missions that I've been keen to get on for a few years now. The boys have been up here for a month already, so I'm gonna check in with them, see what we can do. And I'm really gonna have to step up my game to reach my climate goals now, so I'm gonna try going full vegetarian. Honestly, like, Traveling through Europe now, even if I was doing what I could to keep my emissions down, it's really hard. Just burning fuel, you're just emitting so much CO2. And I was really stressing about it. So getting home to like clean energy from GE. And now there's one gas station that sells biofuel, which is great. So I could just tank up with biofuel and head out to Lingen. And it's 88% less harmful to the environment. Emissions are like low. Are you excited, Christed? Very excited. <laughs> Mika is here, Christopher is here, Jonas is behind the camera. Eric is not here. Missed out on a couple of things. I was super broke after the Alps. I think it was all the beer. Even though it was cheap, it was still expensive when you buy five beers a day. So I had to work a little bit too. Hello, Lingen. Back home. Spring in northern Norway is just chill. You have none of the rush you have in the winter time because you have so much light. Spring is awesome! Right now we have 20 hours of daylight. So it's pretty chill. Camping by the ocean, drinking beer. Wow, nice. Woo. We've been chasing so hard this season. It was good to relax more and just enjoy the mountains. So you ready to drop? Yeah. Okay, it's ready. Stability this spring has been kind of weird. Dropping in five. Like we really had to work to get good lines and ski the kind of stuff we wanted to ski. I don't know how many pits we've dug to actually find something safe. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was way better yeah, than I expected. Shots. In Nikolai, we went checking out one phase. So we found some sketchy layers here. It's not worth it, I think, to risk that. So I guess we can go check out that west aspect, see if it's better over there. <laughs> and I think it was our third or fourth try. I'm ready. We did one line each. Drop in. How was the snow? It was very not nice, but nice. Where is Nikolai going? Is he going to ride all the... Fuck. Ooh, that exposed thing. Well, he is a professional. Well, shit. Huh. This is not good. Got to Stay on your feet when you're mountaineering. Hey, it was fun. Glad we did it. Yeah, it was crust heaven or crust hell. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> Another beautiful day in Lingen. Hard snow, hard people. Today we're doing Swift Couloir, Lingen Classic. First skied by Franson in 2012. And it's tricky because there's a rappel in there, or a few rappels maybe. Windy, icy, rocky. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Skiing in Norway is just kind of more sketchy than the Alps in Canada. I think the entrance we want is maybe around that knob. Yuna is leading the way. A true gentleman. 
It's a weekend trip for the family. Like there's way less snow, way more rocks, way more ice. So it's more like adventure skiing, I would say. You go up these big mountains and you want to ride lines where it's okay to fall. And if you're riding a line where it's not okay to fall, you better be pretty damn sure you're not going to fall. Do you want to put off the anchor down there? Uh, and you can ski first and I'll meet you down there. Like, I'm happy to ski second if you want to. No, it's... Okay. I'm kind of nervous. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is you'll belay me out. Yeah. My life is in your hands, good sir. And I'll go down, feel out the snow. Okay, it feels really good. I'll clip out of the rope. Dropping in three. I'll ski down and start and start making the anchor. <sighs> kind of freaks you out when you know you're skiing right to a big cliff. <sighs> that's, uh, that's a little drop there. Probably Finn's gear, or maybe it's Vagard's all gear. Either way, I'm happy to see it, and I will use it. Reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> oh, slip. I was so nervous on top. I was really feeling it. So when I came down, I was like, where is Nikolai? Did he fall down the cliff? Nico! Yeah! I'm in the safe spot! Okay. Oh shit. Fuck, this rock is so fucked. Yeah, I've heard like the rock is shit. Fuck. I'll try this crack here. This crack is not a crack. Feels pretty good. Yeah, how's that ski? Interesting. The thing is that rock is kind of shitty. But it's it's holding this. Yeah, I think I'm happy. Or I guess I'll be the one to see if my optimism here is well founded or not. <laughs> Stomped it. <laughs> you should definitely get first track skirster because you're on this couloir frenzy this season. Oh, that was fucking sick! That was amazing. That was a long cool art. Yeah. My legs were burning at the end. Luxo Tindan. There's this big massif on the south end of Lingen. The flash, yeah, I tried it two times earlier. That's been a dream of mine for, for many years. I've tried it a couple of times and always failed. 600 vertical meters of epicness. Flash, because it looks like flash, it's like <laughs> Kind of more like a Y, actually. It's more like a cool R that splits into two. The black rock almost towards the top. Yeah. I wonder if you can get around that. What? But the, the right, look, the right one looks pretty, uh, from like one third down, it looks like it's uh, really fluid riding. You can go fast. Actually, in the 20s, it's better the earlier. You adopt the I don't care and I don't give a fuck attitude. And it makes your life so much easier. I think Krister has already adopted it with his pants here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you give a fuck when you wear these? <laughs> no. <laughs> but don't show my friends. Mika is a pretty cool guy. I remember him a little bit when I was a kid and I saw like Onboard magazine and the magazines. I can remember some posters. And he has uh, done a lot of descents in Lingen as well. He's been riding there for a long time. Yeah, you're good. Mika is really impressive. Like he got his emissions down to five tons a year, which is insane. That's half of my goal. I've been like reducing and uh, making changes that actually have not changed too much of my life. I was really scared going into this project was like having worse skiing by traveling less. No, I, I don't really need to go anywhere else and it's just nice to sit and wait for the conditions and then come here. We're in it now. Mika has been trying it too, he got snuffed out. So he's having his revenge. Mika on the revenge train over here. And I saw a lot of places of course. And uh, I think this is still like one of the best places. What's going on there, Christer? I'm 
checking if we're gonna go to the hospital later. Me, Eric, and Jonas went up the regular flash. And me and Pista, we were more on like an adventure mission because we weren't really sure what awaited us. We're going off into a little side couloir just by the crux, so we'll be at the top in like 10 to 15. Good work. That's epic. Oh. oh man. Oh man. So good to be here. <laughs> yeah. The entry is steep. Yeah. It's pretty steep. I can't even see. It does something with your head. I was like, yeah, Nico, you go first. And I was like, ah, I'm not sure. Maybe you can go first. Like, ah, you can go first. But then we did the rock, paper, scissor. And Moment of truth. It's the best of one or one of three? Uh, just the first, best of one. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, okay. And then one, uh, two, three, now, go. You, now you know what. No. <laughs> now you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, on three. Okay, one, two, three. Christer dropping in five, four, three, two, one. Have fun, Christer. The ride down was really good. Like, didn't take it uh, too fast. Just riding it controlled, smooth. Not like charging it. So it was really good. I'm ready. Okay, dropping in two, one. I think it's cooler to ride with uh, kind of the next generation. And it's really nice to see that there's people like really pushing it. And I'm really amazed about the Norwegian shredders. Oh my God! That was so <laughs> sick! That oh. was amazing. They charge hard, I would say. <laughs> I've never seen anybody ride that fast here. Yeah, I'm ready. I think it was the biggest adrenaline rush in maybe two seasons. Whew. I'm out, over. I don't understand it completely because you enjoy making turns, but you don't make so many. You just go straight. I try to make, I like making turns. <laughs> we saw the terrain over there. Christer, I don't know where he gets his motivation from. He's never tired. Christer in the field. On our down days, he would still be climbing mountains and he would bring Jonas. So Jonas would be like, one day would be filming, one day would be riding, and Christer would be just going like every day. He's never stopping. He's always stoked. I, I, I don't get it. I don't think I've ever seen someone that stoked actually. It's weird. How does he do it? Fuck man, he rode it well. I think you're faster than Ode, man. No way, man. Yeah. Ode is Lungen, is the video. And we've watched it so many times. And that's on the north side of Stora Laxaltin. So cool to buckle up on the summit of Stora Laxaltin. And we went up there, roped up. In it now, son. Didn't find any weak layers. It was a weird feeling because it was like, there is no reason not to go. And I was like, I'm sorry to say it, but we're going down here. It's not kiss. We are out there to have fun, but then you're like attracted to these lines that can be really not fun if you mess up. It's a thin line and it's important to be on the right side of it. It's fun. You kind of have the exposure everywhere. Of that cliff, everything skiers right at that. It's pretty, yeah. pretty exposed. For me, the snow looks a little bit hard there. So if you come like full speed on the spine, do a turn, and then you fly over the rocks. <laughs> okay, Eric, Mika, enjoy. Yeah, good luck. I'll see you down there. Be safe.
I'll be safe. It was this snow field onto this ramp with lots of exposure below it. <gasps> so I knew I had to oh my God. keep it together on the ramp. Across the skis. Almost fell two times, I think. Super sketchy. Holy, that was spicy. But uh, no signs of things breaking? No, the snow seemed solid. Uh, all right. I'm uh, good to go. Over. Really scary to see Eric start sliding over that exposure. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. Stay in control, Eric. Stay in control. But he, he held on and he was good. So he, he was okay. Yeah, a little bit icy. Don't recommend that entry. Just gonna try and take it easy down here. The snow is kind of shitty. Couldn't see anything. Like, I almost died. Eric almost died. Mika is responsible. He didn't almost die. But yeah, it's not the best day out there. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did manage to get my emissions down from 40 tons a year to 12. I offered him meat, but it did. <laughs> He didn't take it. But you're wondering why I care about this vote in Oslo? Well, the Endless Winter Project is fundamentally a green growth experiment to um, decouple the value of my skiing from its environmental impact. This is what GE is doing, you know, by expanding green power. Or how compared to in the 60s, we use 80% less aluminum making a can and 95% less energy when we source that aluminum from return cans instead of the ground. Or applying those same ideas to outerwear production. But it's also entirely new business models, like my friends Chris and Taylor, who when they're not surfing Mavericks or sending spines are creating sharing economy solutions with Awaco so that I don't need to keep my entire quiver at home, but rather pick up what I need, when and where I need it, making the gear four times more productive in its lifetime. So this vote is really on whether I was able to do the same with my skiing, to do more with less. I've been telling myself that I had to fit this mold of what I thought a pro skier was. And I guess this proves that I was wrong, that I just hadn't explored alternatives to flying all around the world, jumping in helis at every opportunity to do my job well. And I've had the best winter of my life riding with my good buddies. We were so lucky. Good preseason here in Northern Norway. The best January in Tyrol since the 60s. How many times have I been here? Yeah. <laughs> This past week or past eight days, <laughs> yeah. I think this will be the fifth. Fifth time up. Or not up Thomas Renda, but this part. And then we have Avon with us today. After Christer broke up with his girlfriend, we took him in. And after that, we, we we're friends. He just slept on our couch for like forever. What's your crew called? A rat crew, 9000. <laughs> So cool! <laughs> yeah, Christian! Yeah, man! Okay, so my line is pretty much just fall line from here. I'm ready. having a second kid, a boy, in one month. What do you think their snowboarding will be like? I'm hopeful that they will not go pro, especially in the future where every, everybody is like pushing it even harder. But it's just to enjoy the mountains. Hear me loud, louder than the voices in your head. Do you hear the words I spoke onto the frequencies I said? And the headlights in the dark. Sooner than you think, this is ours. Yeah. 
Peace out, Flash. Yeah. Peace. Hey, hey, drop the mic. <laughs>